Hey everyone, Darlin in here. Welcome back to my dungeon. Today, my party continues their adventure on Stormwreck Isle. Yes, it's been a while, but they just arrived at the Cursed Shipwreck and I need to get some ghouls painted. If anything, I just need one ghoul man for the actual adventure, but I ended up getting 12 of them, so that's six packages, because I do believe I'm gonna collect as many ghouls, zombies, goblins, all that stuff, skeletons, as many as I can. So I was able to get these ghouls down at Power Up Gaming in Barrie, Ontario. So that's powerupgaming.ca. They're $7.50 Canadian each, so it's a bit pricier than some other stores, but man, they had a lot in stock and they still do. So if you're looking for some ghouls, absolutely recommend getting them there. So yeah, what you're getting are two medium creatures, monsters. And then on the back you're seeing here, the actual image that they're using for reference, which I feel is not that great. I mean, I can't see the colors too well. Are they supposed to look ash white or ash gray completely? And their clothes? Their claws look black. I can see their tongue. You know, there's detail in the picture here, so I'm not too sure. I'm actually going to use the monster manual as a reference. You're seeing here, I'm showing you a picture on screen. That's a ghast, which is a more powerful version of a ghoul, but nonetheless, they're going to be the same color, I believe. Moving forward, opening up the backs. So as I crack open the box here, right on, that's cool. You actually do get the clear bottoms, the bases here. And I do hope they do that for every miniature moving forward. It just makes sense to me. So here's a close up of the unpainted version. I always am impressed with, you know, the 3D miniatures that they do. Look at that, man. You can see the spine on his back and all the muscle tissue, whatever's left, you know, the clothing. That's very cool. I'm going to do something extremely basic here. I don't want to go too crazy, but I do want to get that depth, man, using some washes. I'll show you guys later in a sec. The second ghoul. Oh, yeah, that's a very cool pose, man. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be fun. There's his back. Again, you can see the spine. The vertebrae protruding. Super cool. Okay, again, you only need the one ghoul for chapter three, truly. I'm just getting as many as I can, and then I'm going to use them for some other adventures. But I will be doing 12 ghouls. Okay, so unlike before in the other three painting videos, I was featuring the army painter Dungeons & Dragons officially licensed set. This time, I'm showing you on screen here real quick, I'm using the prismatic paints done by Vallejo, I apologize, V-A-L-L-E-J-O, I believe is how you spell it. They have two paint sets, one that's called the Prismatic Paint Basic Starter Set and the Intermediate Set. They were charging, I think, 100 Canadian. That said, I mean, I'm discovering these paints for the first time. I'm not familiar with them. Unlike before, I had a year of painting and then I started recording myself. So this is all new. You guys are going to see how I'm discovering this stuff. And I've been hearing from everybody, but this is the better brand when it comes to painting. But I'm not too sure why. I was very happy with the Army Painter stuff, to be honest with you. As well, in every video, I always recommend the Nulzer D&D Basic Starter Set here. I'm trying to show you on screen. You get the base coat, the detail, and the dry brush. Excellent starter set because those are the three primary paintbrushes you'll use. Over time, man, no joke, you will want other paintbrushes because you'll start to see and appreciate, you know, what the others offer. But you'll absolutely be able to get what you need done with those three brushes. When you buy the basic starter set and the intermediate case, each one comes with its own brush. So the basic ended up coming with the multi-purpose brush round number one on the bottom here. And the intermediate came with the number three slash zero fine detail. I'm not sure what that means. I don't know what, what to compare that to, just being honest. But I do dig the foil print on the actual paintbrushes. And I gotta say, unlike the Nulzer starter set here, they feel better, man. They actually do feel better. I'm gonna be using these today. So yeah, just follow along if you've never done this before and you'll see how it all works out. Okay, and to begin, now that I've talked about the brushes, the paints that I'm using, the little dish you're gonna require is a small cup of some sort with water. That way you can dilute your brush or wet it, you know, get the paint that you're using off. And then any palette, I'm using like a sushi plate here. So to begin, all of the nulls are miniatures. They do say pre-primed, ready to go to the box. I'm not saying they are not, but I say this every video. I do recommend using a basic gray primer. You can buy these for a couple bucks literally for a bigger bottle and it's just brush on primer gray is the most neutral color so it would work for most things when you dilute it with water and you just get it all over the surface just the thinnest coat it it helps tack everything on and makes the colors pop a bit better it's awesome i'll show you so take your brush on primer do not shake it in the beginning you want to squeeze out the excess paint it'll be liquid like clear it should be and then it's really dark and runny it does not look like it's consistent and that's when you shake vigorously see what this looks like oh yeah that's way better but it's still just that's my third round of squeezing it out and then shaking again 
So after the fourth time, that, that looks great. So I'm using that brand new brush that came with that set, the basic sets, the multi-purpose, and what you would use from the starter set, if you have that, I recommend the base coat. You wanna wet your brush really well. And we're gonna dilute the gray primer. Unlike all the other paints, I actually recommend keep that water on your brush right now. Get it in there and then just get the side of the gray primer and dilute it. So to begin, I want to cover his entire body without even having to put more primer on. Just wanna smear it everywhere, even if it barely catches. Do not wanna let it pool in those small crevices like his face. Instinctively, you probably want to put more primer on immediately. Don't. Just keep trying to smear that from where it's wet. Just keep trying to push it away from. Like if I start on his head, just keep trying to take that off of his head before it dries up. Okay, so I'm going back in. Again, wetting my brush and then put that in the gray primer. And swirl that around. I'm gonna go on his back now. Bring that down from there. Yeah, want to cover underneath his armpits. You know, even if you can't see it, I'm trying to show you, get under there. Even if you can't see it, just keep brushing over top because it's touching, man, it's getting there. His hands, his fingers, underneath the skirt here. You do want to get that. It's just like a block. You want to get every part of that surface. And then you want to prime the bottom here wetting the brush, putting it in the primer, swirling it around, and get that in focus for you. Once this dries, you'll be able to see where I missed. It'll be super evident. So I'm gonna let that one dry and then prime the second one. I really dig this pose on this guy. So see how it's really thick right now? I'm gonna quickly just try and get it on the main surface and then Brush away, brush away from that detail. I don't want it to pull in. I'm a broken record, but man, you'll see. You'll see. And try different angles of your brush. You know, if you're just going over the top here, you wouldn't be able to get in the crevice of the muscles, I want to say, on his arm. His fingers, man, look at that. Gnarly. That's cool. That's really cool. Now, see I'm holding the miniature here? I do have... This is a handle, man. It really helps. I just haven't trained using it. I know it sounds silly, but Citadel color, and I'm showing you on screen, I think I paid maybe 10 bucks for one of these. You can see that there's two circles there and it's a spring. That spring just opens up and it locks the miniature right in. So right now with no base even, I'm just gonna open that up to the middle part here and look, it still holds it. Sometimes it's really difficult to get at the crevices, man, when your fingers are in the way, for sure. But you don't need it. You don't need it. It's just another accessory that helps assist with the painting. Just want to make sure you keep that detail in this face, man, because that looks really cool. Oh man, that's awesome. I want to make sure you can see his toes, not completely cover them with paint. That's easy to do. And don't forget to wet your brush every time after you're done using it. Get rid of that excess paint. And I've got a rag just Lightly wipe that off and you can set your brush down. So that's the same mini, primed on the left, their primed version on the right. You know, you may feel like there's no difference whatsoever. Mine's darker, obviously. But I do feel that the paint does stick better. But I haven't used the new prismatic paints yet, so I'm not too sure, man. We'll see what happens. So and then the other version here, just seeing the detail on their faces, that's awesome. Uh, okay, so now that I actually have them all primed, I'm going to be painting them ghoul flesh. So this was in the prismatic paint set. That makes it very easy. What's cool about prismatic paints, even though you're getting less, so it appears to me big time actually, I could be wrong, but really does look like less. You can actually replace these individually. I think for three or four Canadian, if not that much, which is amazing, truly. Here we go, I'm using ghoul flesh on all of their skin, their torso and their legs. Just gonna put it on every one of them. And don't forget, when you open a brand new bottle, I'm gonna squeeze the top out without shaking, getting rid of any of the excess stuff. Oh, that looks pretty good, surprisingly. Okay, so it's not like this see-through liquid that comes out, it looks like the paint with a bit of, you know, mixture, like a darker blue with a lighter blue. So now I'm gonna shake it vigorously. Yeah, I'm wondering if less is more with this one here. I'm gonna hardly put any. I'm used to being generous my, with my other paints. Well, let me see, yeah, man. After my second round, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna test this out, one sec. So wet your brush always, then 
kind of pushed off to the side. Just dabbing the paint. Yeah, man, that's mixed really well. I am surprised, so I'm not used to that. Immediately, it didn't take that much to get this paint going. Mind you, these would be newer paints as opposed to the other set I was using from a few years ago, even if they're sitting on the shelf, I wanna say. I don't know. I don't know. So let's do this. I'm gonna actually get this going right now. Again, I'm just gonna paste it all over his body, try and avoid his clothes because, you know, it's gonna be a completely different color. When it comes to the tongue and stuff, I'm not gonna try and paste it on, but I'm not worried if it touches. Just everywhere else is fine. And I do not want it to pool, so I'm gonna try and spread it. Just don't rush it. When I say don't rush it, don't pour it on and then cover the body and be done with it. You know, you, you really want to see the detail. Let's get right under his chin. His belly. Again, it's okay to touch the clothing, but if you can avoid it, even better. Less paint on the body. Again, the more detail that shows, that's all it is, truly. You can keep correcting it, but the more that you correct and the more that you put paint on top of paint, it'll just look like a smooth surface over time. I know from experience, I've done it. Love the striations, you know, the arm coming out here. That's awesome. So cool. Oh yeah, and the head. The face. We're gonna do his claws black later. I am very happy with the Army Painter paints that I've been using, like very happy but I may already be loving this more. So I'm trying to get in on the inside of the leg here, the kneecap behind, but I'm trying to avoid that clothing or ankle strap. I'm not sure what that is actually, but his feet are bare, so that's cool. I'm gonna get it all over them. I'm very happy with that. Just how else going on. I mean, I, I can see myself doing a second coat quickly. So again, just one little drop. You know, I'm barely applying any pressure. Yeah, and a dot comes out. And that's what I recommend. Just so you can save up on this paint. Because it's beautiful. It feels smooth too. I'm, I'm not an expert. I mean, I've only had a couple paints, right? Many of the others. The Army Painter. I'm going to shake this up more. So I could start to see it separate a little bit on that drop. Barely wet your brush. You know, when you do, make sure there's no water. Well, I say no water, don't dry your brush out. Okay, second one just brings it to life. And I mean, nothing's happened yet, but you know, it really does have that instant reward feel when you're doing this. So it barely takes any time to get over such a small surface. I wanna make sure that detail shows. So I'm constantly going over the same area, but man, that's tacking on really nice. And then back over to the same spots that I've been over, getting rid of any of the excess paint. That is going on very nice. Ooh. I believe that right now, just from what I'm seeing, it would be less paint to paint these in general. I am so glad I went to this paint set for these ghouls specifically. I almost did and I was like, yeah, I'll just use what I have. Very happy with, oh man, the first coat. Really? So that is one coat. And it does look good. I mean, I could probably leave it, but I'm gonna give it just a thin coat. Definitely shake vigorously again. Wet that brush. Make sure it's dry too. I've done 12 of them, so they are. Just to show ya. Here's my second coat applied immediately so you can see a darker spot on the back, for instance, okay? Yeah, it's much brighter. I'm gonna apply the second coat. That'll be it for sure after number two. Yeah, I'm not too worried again. I'm just touching some spots. I'm not worried about it being perfect. So I was really quick to give it that second coat. I'm gonna let that dry, do another one. In the next step here, we're doing the skirt or whatever's left of his clothes. And in the monster manual, it does show them with some sort of like armbands and leg bands with, you know, a bit showing on the skirt here. But other than that, it looked like a tan color. I'm gonna try mixing leather brown with dead white. Try and release just a little bit at the top without shaking. See if this comes out like water. Yes, it does a bit, a little bit more. There, when it starts to show paint, stop. Then you shake vigorously, one little drop, and that looks ready. All right, so we're doing the white as well. I'm not shaking, I'm just releasing whatever's at the top. So it took, again, two squeezes. I saw like a consistency going on, shaking vigorously. And then my second wrap. I think it needs another shake. Just looks a little runny still. Yes, that's good. Okay, so now I'm gonna do one to one, meaning I'm just doing one drop, one small drop of white, dead white, and one small drop of leather brown. 
going to shake this again because it's been a second. Just one small equal drop to each other. Wet the brush. Same brush as before. Feels great. Now I'm mixing the two colors together. As I'm mixing them, I can see the color. It does look tan. That's what I want. Yeah, I'm going to try this right away. All right, so we're just going to try and do all the clothing, the skirt and the ankle wraps. And if he's got, I think, some wrist wraps, I can't tell. That might be too dark. Still, it looks almost like a pukey diarrhea brown here on camera. Sorry to say that, but in front of me, it does not. Could be just the lighting I'm seeing through, but that doesn't look the same what's in front of me. Just to let you know, it looks way more like a beige color in front. And if I find this is too dark, I'm going to lighten it up the next time here because I've got 12 of these guys to do. Right underneath the skirt, you can get your brush in there. I can't show you, but you can just, you know, wet it and then get right in there. Try to, and then smearing it. Trying to only touch the clothes because I will have to touch up that kneecap again later on. That's fine. Getting rid of what's on my brush on the wraps on his legs. Just going behind it because I know it wraps around. Going behind the leg. I think it is armbands. I'm pretty sure it is right around the one, not this one, but just this one. Yes, I can in through the camera. I can see the two straps better. Now I see it in real life in front of me right here. Whoops. And I went into the skin already and right there going diagonally. All right, I'm going to let that dry and then most definitely do a second coat to brighten that up. Maybe I'll put a little bit more white in this one, actually two to one. And if I can, trying to always remove as much paint off the surface, spread it as much as possible. And we'll do a second coat, of course, going right there underneath on the side where you can't see, just making sure you get all the way around. And on this side too, it looks like he's got two armbands to me. Well, he does now. Right inside, careful not to touch. Just saves you from having to go back constantly. Whereas on this version, you don't see anything on his calves or his shins, but on both forms, I am seeing the armbands. Neat. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry, the other one dry, and I'm doing the other 10 versions for 10, five of each. First coat. So we're actually going back to the one to one of leather with the dead white, not two to one. As you're seeing on that monster manual, it looks way closer with one to one. So this is the second coat. see that gray showing through now it won't just touching on the second coat but also trying to get all of it inside the crevices and at the same time not letting it pool in you want to spread it as much as possible you know I'm still using the same paint on this brush I'm trying to get rid of it on the back now easily too just repeatedly going over and it does catch you just got to be a bit patient that way you're not putting way too much on again you'll lose that detail it's so easy right underneath his arms right here be sure to get that it's, and try not to touch his arm. That's tricky. And then we're going to do that to his leggings and the one armband here. Wetting my brush, pushing the water off to the side lightly, and then back on to the paint, swirling it around the bottoms here. Oh, that's a lot of paint. You can see it just covered that detail, right? That's the pooling I'm referring to. So I've got too much on my brush just to show you. See my brush looks wet. I'm going to smear it on my palette. And then now I'm going to go back to this and try and take it off there you can see now you can start to see those little lines showing through we want all of them there for sure i'm going to go on this other side just touching lightly gently seriously on the backs of the legs using the same paint on the brush just touching and this is where that that holder right now because i'm trying to use my fingers to hold closely to the bottom i'm going to use this there we go now you can see i have much more flexibility to get in there not have my hands cover that what a difference man it's just awkward for me because i haven't practiced using this i do think it is ideal so if you're just starting man i want to say start using this right from the get-go see how much easier that is to get there without my hands blocking the way i'm like you know shaking all over the place trying to keep it still i'm even using my right hand to push against it to brace it so you know extra stability super cool all right, and then up to his armband here, using the same paint on the brush. And then I want to get inside here. You can barely see it. His head's covering, but right here, right there, man. You can just touch that. That is the second coat. 
and we're going to do the other variation here wetting the brush pressing it against the side getting rid of the excess water i have too much on my brush you can see it i'm showing you right now see how there's liquid just floating above the bristles i want to smear that off that way you just have more control as to how much is going on there we go then i'm going to get along the side this would be easy to miss right underneath the arm you can see underneath the skirt barely you can get there just be careful also to this band right here it's okay to cover that and go over onto his skin because we're going to touch that up with ghoul flesh and the detail brush with it excuse me along the edge here so it's okay to spill over that band right there you do want to see that punch out basically the less you put on your brush and the more time you spend spreading it the more detail you preserve that's ultimately it and it is very easy to just slap on the paint and get it all over everywhere not realizing that you've covered some detail okay let's let the second coat dry on all of them give it maybe 10-15 minutes wet your brush immediately after get rid of all the paint and then use a cloth or a rag i want to say over paper towel i've been using paper towel for dry brushing for that technique but technically from what i'm reading if you can get a rag and then put your excess paint on that when you dry brush it's better than taking all the paper towel particles onto your brush so the very next step i'm choosing to do is the tongue and we're just going to use a pale flesh that looks like this on screen but to me it looks a bit pink here i'm hoping anyway we'll find out once i apply it do not shake just open it gently squeeze out any clear liquid the smallest amount i can pour out and it starts showing consistency now i'm going to shake vigorously that looks like a pink color i'm going to shake again one more time and because it is such a small area to cover you know we can use our multi-purpose brush that'd be fine but if we use the detail brush again it's less amount of bristles less amount of surface area that we're touching and then we have to keep going over that ghoul flesh on his face because we're just going to lightly touch it in the prismatic paint set the intermediate you do get the fine detail if you're using the starter set you just use a detail brush i mean i hardly put any on my palette i just let the paint come out because we're using hardly any literally just dabbing it you can see that glob of paint on my detail brush easily through i'm gonna actually smear that on my palette i don't want that there you can see it's on the bristles and not a puddle just gonna ever so lightly touch his tongue look at that just touching and it's taking already doing my best not to get anywhere but the tongue i'm trying again we can touch up later but we don't have to i'm just running over it over and over gently just touching the surface man that's it and then because his tongue does go below his chin i'm going to try and go behind it without even really seeing I'm just touching behind I'm just gonna let that go I'm gonna let that dry so to me it looks very pale I don't see pink yet but once it dries I'll I'll do another coat before I do the others and see how that looks after two coats I may have to mix some paint I think so for the next tongue I am gonna mix two parts pale flesh one part bloody red to give it some pink I want it to stand out a bit more let's see if this does anything and if it doesn't look good i'll just not do it to the other ones but just squeeze any clear liquid at the top i'm seeing it i'm seeing it and there close it and then shake vigorously and it seems to be my third time that looks good but i'm going to shake it again that does look good and then i'm just adding one little drop to my two of that pale skin pale flesh excuse me using my detail brush still i'm going to mix these two colors together that bloody red is really red too red i'm gonna to have to add another glob of pale flesh so three to one let's see what that looks like okay so just touching trying to just touch there there so that looks more pink for sure but a little too dark still in my opinion just a bit too dark I'm trying to get in there with the brush on the side of the tongue gently just gently touching oh like that and behind it just gently touch there we go and it just tacks on beautifully his tongue's a bit red but that is better than what i liked on the other one it was too pale okay so yeah i would prefer this one over the original but it's still too strong a bloody red so i'm gonna add another glob of pale flesh to that bloody red mixture so that's like four or five to one wetting my brush pushing all that water out trying to and then stirring that up into the existing yeah that looks better already okay on to the other variant i've got a lot of paint on my brush you can see it i'm just gonna touch like i should get rid of it i should but i'm not oh there 
Oh, that's awesome. I do like that color. Okay, I'm gonna try and get all of them right now. Be sure to wet your brush. Okay, so now I wanna do all of their teeth. I mean, if I can see them. So I do see the teeth on its upper lip underneath it. This came with the intermediate one. That's fine detail. Again, if you get the starter set, it's just the detail brush. We're going to be using just bone white. Again, just release the liquid at the top. First, do not shake. Brand new bottle. I can see some clear liquid. I'm gonna shake vigorously. I see a bit of separation, just a subtle amount, so I'm gonna shake it again. You know, if it looks watery, it shouldn't. Do another shake. Yep. Okay, perfect. And just try and graze, and I mean graze this area. You know, where I'm just doing it over and over where I'm not touching it until I touch it. With that brush, dab it into your paint and then smear it guaranteed onto your palette to get rid of the paint on your brush. For real. Oh, jeez. Am I touching it? I do see that ridge now, though. Do you see on the side of his tongue? That's his giant canine. Okay, so that's now showing, which is great. You know, in order to see the teeth, we gotta just go over it and not be too worried about making mistakes. Okay, and then I'm gonna go again on the top lip. Try not to get it too far up his lip. Going down the side of the tongue, trying to catch that tooth. I'm gonna let that guy dry. This is the beauty of having copies because you can see how it turns out on the other ones. Here it goes, come on, come on. Oh. Now the top. Trying to get the side of his canine there, if I can. And then the top of the tongue, which is the teeth, the upper lip. Grazing, if I can, graze it. Okay, I'm gonna leave that. I can go back to the first one and then touch that up. Give it a bit more punch with the second coat. We're gonna actually do the claws black. So we're just gonna use black. All right, using the detail brush still, dabbing it, and then taking a little off the brush by smearing it on the palette. And I'm just gonna go over the very tips, just a little bit like this, like that. Man, that looks cool already. Try and get underneath those fingertips there. That's cool. I think they have longer claws. I mean, I feel like I'm going to go a little higher. Not feel I am. Like half their fingers. Then on the other hand, just using the same paint on the brush. Careful not to hit his face. Then underneath, just drag it over and over like this. Ooh, how cool is that, man? Yeah, that's awesome. Just repeatedly doing this one stroke from up to down. Okay, I'm gonna let that one dry. Do the other variation with that brush. Push the water off and then dab the black. Smear it onto your palette. Just going one way, one direction. One direction. Across half his fingers. And then underneath, same idea. Let's go here, just the backs. Oh, I went too high up, I think. I'm gonna touch that up later. On the inside, just touching the edges, trying to I'm gonna do his claws on the bottom here if I can. You can barely see them. They're like going into the gray base. So I'm gonna just try and gently graze the top so it only catches, hopefully, the feet, the toes, instead of just putting it down, but we'll see. I have a feeling that's not gonna be easy. I can barely see his toes, guys. Oh, there, there. Yeah, it's like they're melting into the base. And because I didn't do it to the first one, I must. You can definitely see his toes here. I mean, that's not a problem at all. Even the textures on his cloth on the other one just felt much smoother. This one feels more detailed, I wanna say. Much more detailed for some reason. I'm not sure why that's the case. Much easier. I'm using the same brush. I'm just touching, constantly going over. And then now I'm gonna do this to all of them. And from what I'm seeing here in the monster manual, it does look like their eyes are black as well. You really don't want any paint on your brush, so dab it and then smear it on your palette. Just touch the eyes. Just trying to touch. Oh, jeez. I can't tell. See that? Just touched. I don't want to go anymore. There, touch. One more touch. Touch there you know i don't have to fill it in completely just so you can see two dots i think that'll look better than nothing okay here we go just touching i am not looking through the camera just touching oh just that that's enough oh 
Yep, that's cool. I'm happy with that. Right on. I'm going to do that to the rest of them. And then after doing that, I'm just using the black again and doing a second coat on all of their claws. And then the bottoms of the feet here, the claws, just touching the tops again. We're going to go over and touch up with the other colors around it. So don't worry about getting it on the base. Yeah, nice. It's coming along. All right, so I'm going to do touch ups again with the ghoul flesh from the prismatic paint set, the fine detail. Again, you can just use any detail brush. But see the eyeball there? It's just a little too big. Anything like his kneecaps there, he's got brown all over it. We're gonna touch all of that up and it's only gonna take like a few seconds using the detail brush still. Get the ghoul flesh, just a small drop. We're not using that much. Dab that brush, smear it on your palette. There, see on his forearm? Watch this. This is magic, no joke. Boom, done, fixed his face. So the eyeballs we're talking about, just gonna touch underneath just barely, like that. And I just narrowed his eye down. Awesome, see the thumb? Way too much claw going up that, his thumb right there. I'm gonna touch it, touch his thumb, boom. On the inside of the hand, touching. Just getting rid of that black. Right along his hand here, his knee right there. Again, same paint on the brush, haven't gone back underneath his armpits. Oh, I can actually. Using the camera, I could. There's a little brown going on. Wow, that's cool. I did not see that with my eyes. And then now I'm going to try and get some streaks in between the toes, like whether or not it's on the ridge, I have no idea. And I'll just touch that up probably with black later. That's coming along beautifully for me. I'm very happy with that. Wet that brush. Some more paint on it. Again, just detail. So you want to smear it off of your paintbrush so you're not globbing it on. Especially when you just want to do touch-ups, man. You don't want more than what's necessary. I'm looking at the top of his head. I'm just going to add a bit. I don't know if that's dark up there or not, but it won't be anymore. I missed his forearm, this one. I missed that altogether, the brown. Out of all 12, I don't. I hope I didn't miss any more. Ooh. So his elbow right here, same paint on the brush. Just touching. See his kneecap here? You can barely see some skin showing, and there should be. Just a touch. Really, other side, same here. And then you can absolutely see that brown all over his kneecap. Just take your time. Touching. Oh, I know I keep saying it, but it really is that easy. Right here in the back of the leg, I'm just gonna touch that area. Instant fix. That's cool. That's really cool. The back of the leg here, it's spilling onto his calf. That brown, we're gonna get rid of that instantly. I put too much on my brush, you can see that I'm gonna tw turn the brush a bit. Oh, I don't wanna get it on his clothes. Okay, the next thing we can do is actually touch up the tongue. I wanna say where the teeth are. If you wanna go the extra step, which I do, I'm just using that blue across still the top of his lip. But now I am going to actually do that brown again one more time. For the next step, we're going back to the skirt and we're going to touch it up. Not a coat, just touch ups using dead white and leather brown one to one. Give them each a shake. Just a little bit, guys. Don't waste your paint on this part. You're just touching up. Using the detail brush still, wetting the brush. We're really just looking for anywhere right there. See that ridge coming up? That's still that skirt. So I'm just going to touch that. It's like some sort of rope or drawstring is holding it up. Maybe just here. Maybe. Not necessary. Again, just touching up. Maybe the rest right there. I'm going to do right here. So yeah, just make sure that you touch up anything like that. Any other spots or if there's some of that ghoul flesh showing on some of the bandages or the skirt or any black, you'll see it. Looking at this alternative and I can see that drawstring has some ghoul flesh on it. We want brown. Check this out. Just gentle. One direction. Oh. Just let it, you know, have a little contact and it does the rest. Next, I would like to try a blue tone right on the chest here along those lines because his chest crevice is there the rib cage those are very fine thin lines but man you can do it you can get in there and then make that a specific tone you know i want to say flesh would be the coolest but it's going to make it very muddy brown and in the monster manual it does look like a darker blue in the gassed illustration 
which is a super powered ghoul from what I understand. So I am gonna add some blue tone to the chest. I think that will look better. That blue tone is not featured in these prismatic paint sets. That's separate from the army painter and it comes in a quick shade wash set specifically and they're all just washes. I do believe you can find other companies, probably this same company makes washes as well, but it gets right into the crevices and if you paint only into those crevices, man, you'll make them punch. It just adds that depth, that three dimensional pop. I'm going to show you. We're using a blue tone by the Army Painter Quick Shade. It's a wash. I am going to shake it. I don't think you have to release any at the top like the other paints because it is like water basically. This is very easy to botch up because if you put way too much on, it's just going to pour all over his body. And really, ideally, I just want to touch the tip of my paintbrush and get all of it off. We're just going to trace the inside of his rib cage. I hope Oh, this is going to be crazy like this. See that small amount, that small amount I just put there. Truly, that's all I want. Just want to touch those crevices. And I'm going to go back, get my brush wet, but get most of it off. The smallest lines like this on his chest. Oh yeah, that's what I want. So if I can ideally just get those little lines, you could smear it all over, but again, you won't see that distinct highlight on the rib cage. That blue tone would just override everything and it would just look muddy. I'm barely grazing it. I don't want to go over it and I don't want to get too close like there. Maybe I just do a couple lines so it's not everywhere. Across the belly. On top. We're going to do the same thing to the striations on the shoulders here. See that where it's evident that there's a huge crease by going in with this. Yeah, you're just making that stand out even more. Back to the blue tone, just dabbing it on my brush, getting rid of most of it. So to this shoulder here, I'm give you an example. I'm gonna try and needle point it. Try to grazing, going down like that, just touching. That's it. And then down to the bicep, just touching, barely touching. Striations on his arms. Here's shoulder blades. Oh man, it's gonna look cool if I get this right. Just going in between the vertebrae if I can. Getting along that muscle. I'm barely touching. I mean, absolutely just grazing it. Because if you don't, it's just going to smear. It's amazing how the smallest amount of pressure, like none, can still create such amazing effects. Still blows me away when I'm doing it, seeing it in real time just happen. Okay, going along up these again, just following those deep cracks like this. Gentle, super gentle, super gentle. Trying to be, yeah, I don't want to keep dabbing in the middle. I'm going to leave that maybe right here. I think that's going to look pretty good. If you can, I mean, see the hand here? How you can see the fingers, the bones? You can get in between that if, you know, awesome. Just gently touching, gently like that even, just helps, really does. That's it, just a few touches. Wow, man, awesome. See down here, this calf, wanna accentuate that. Barely touching, oh, I'm barely touching. Leave it like that, just enough. Just a small amount. Right there. Right under that cheek. So it just pronounces that that bone, that cheekbone. Oh, barely touching. There. Just barely making them look a bit more gaunt. You know, adds that depth that's sunken in. Can I do the crown of his head? Yep, with like his brow. I'm gonna try that. So I'm gonna let that dry and then learn. When I say learn, I mean once I can see this dry, whether or not I put more or less, I think less. I feel like that's too much already. And I was just touching it. I was just touching it, honestly. Ooh, man, that's, uh, it's not hard. It's just, you gotta be super patient. So many times I've, I want to say not ruined miniatures, but afterwards going, man, I was just rushing it. You know, even as you're taking your time, if you're not just grazing over and over, you know, less is more for sure. You know, you could try 
a different type of wash, but I think blue is the closest to what you're seeing in the monster manual. So I'm going to use less. I'm going to try for less. Like that less, you know, where you, you're unsure whether or not you actually touched it. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. I'll show you after. Hopefully I can do this guy properly. There's like none on my brush right now, but it's there. Try and trace those lines. Don't just push it in. Lightly touching, going along that line. And that's it. That's totally what I'm going for. Here we go on the side of the ribcage, just those tiny, tiny lines. Super tiny. Yep, even when you just think you touch it, let go. Let's go to the arm now before I loaded it on, I guess. Whereas now I'm just doing one then that's it. Just stop right there. I'm gonna go up here, paint that a little blue, and down here like this, just so the spine looks like it's meant to have that darkness. Oh, just touching there, bring that crevice down here. Again, I haven't gone back for more yet. Right here, the tricep, just ever so light. Like that, that's it, and then right here. Because when it dries, it becomes really pronounced. Go down here, use what's on the brush. Yep, just lightly draw that, that's it. There's a line right here, I'm gonna try that. So we're going to compare this one to the one I just done before this, so you can see the difference. The one on the left here is what I prefer. The one on the right is what I originally had done. They're very similar, truly, they are. But the one on the right it just feels a bit more bluey, whereas this one seems more natural, the striations. But you can see on the right, see in the lower back area, how it's more, th it's just thicker. The blue is much thicker versus it's a lot thinner on this side, which is ideal. Yeah, I'm like, I'm happy with both, truly. But yeah, I'm going to go for this one more. I'm going to take my time and just trace those lines. This guy might be a little bit more tricky. I'm going to tilt it upside down more like this so the paint goes down with the gravity. It gives me more of a needle point as well. Yes, that caught. So just once across, do not go back and forth, I think. Otherwise, you're going to add too much. And then once down all the way in the middle. That's what I'm going to do. Strong dudes here. Just that amount. And add some more to the brush. Needlepoint like style here. Just touching, and I mean barely, those striations. Once, then leave it. Just one line down each striation, striation excuse me, like that. Cool. Now we're going to put some more on the brush. Super light, like that. Very cool. Like super cool. You're just tracing, truly. Maybe on the ankle here, right here where there's, you know, a little crevice. Just get in there. That's it. Right here. Ever so lightly. Ever so lightly. Underneath that cheek cheekbone. There. That's it. How cool is that, eh? Truly. Oh, his head. Definitely his head right there, just lightly. I mean, hardly any, hardly any. Like that. Just helping pronounce his forehead there. I recommend you go to his hands because you can definitely see them separating here. Very cool, if you can get in there, just gently guys, gently. Super gently, just those thin, thin lines. See that, those crevices? You can do it, you can, just gently. Okay, now I have to do this to all the other ones. 
Now we're going to do the same wash idea to this skirt, but only in these crevices, not everywhere, just in the deep lines. We're going to attempt for the first time using their sepia wash. Let's see what that looks like. There's an umber as well that's really dark, but I want something lighter. Doing this over and over until it touches. There, and then that line there, that line there. Want to get those corners on the bottom just ever so lightly. Just want to draw some lines. Ever so lightly. darker. Oh, that's too dark there. On that band. Going across. I do want that to stand out more. Let's get it right here. That's going to really help that waistband punch. Gently though. Very gently. Just enough to touch again. I know I keep saying it, but it truly is the case. Yeah, like that. Oh, that's good. Yes. And then on down here, see where these lines are? Just lightly get a couple of them. Grazing it, helping it stick out a bit. Not too much, otherwise it's just going to be all muddy. What I'm talking about now on the wristbands because there's really no texture I've kind of covered it unfortunately just a little anywhere really just a couple stripes like that to give the illusion you can see a couple of the bandages there and then on the light wrap right here just a couple helps it see a different color well, look at that just by adding that wash, it just makes that skirt punch 3D. Boom! Wicked, man. Very happy with that. Okay, so on the skirt for this one, I feel like it's really smooth. There's not a lot of texture going on. So, wherever you see it, just right here, I'm going to try and get those little ridges. Oh, that's way too much. Oh, jeez. Oh, come on. I'm going to have to quickly get rid of that dark spot. you can almost paint it on completely. Now we're gonna go for that waist, just the waistband, not above it, trying to only get that. But yeah, for a smooth skirt, there's not a lot of crevices. I just actually put too much there. I see it pulling up, you don't want that. I would like more depth on these lines right here. That's why I'm pushing down there, giving that more darkness. And then the wristbands, bandages. Just trying to get on the insides of it, not all over, just to give it that illusion of 3D depth with the bandages. There, that's all I'm gonna do. And let that dry. Beauty, then do it to all of the rest of them. Now for the final step, I believe, we're gonna do the bases back to that gray primer so just a neutral color but making sure not to get his feet back to the brush on primer which you can buy separately again and I will be using the detail brush because I don't want to get anything on his feet whatsoever to ensure that we're just gonna take our time I have lots on the detail brush but just gonna show you try to Then we can go in after if we need to and put more glue flesh on his feet. We'll let that dry and then do the other 12 or 11. 12 ghouls, six packages total. This is all of them. I'm gonna show you a close up. And I wanna say here are the two best that I feel I would want represented. That 
was fun to put together. Oh, look at that. I love that. Oh, that pose is so cool. Oh, nice. You know, adding that, that sepia wash really does give it that rugged, dirty cloth look. Very cool. You know, just getting under the cheekbones too with that blue wash, you can see now that it's drying. See how it gives it that 3D depth? You can even go further, farther, whatever, and you can dry brush the top again with more of the uh, ghoul flesh. But honestly, I feel like I'd just be going back and forth, you know, touching up, touching up, and it'd be highlighting where I want him to look, you know, kind of darker. But yep, if you found it was too pronounced, like right here on the back, you could add a dry brush to this, and it would lighten up the very tops, the ridges. Just to show you guys what it looks like, I'm gonna use ghoul flesh, we're gonna dry brush one of the backs. For this technique, I always say this every video, you wanna just get your brush a little bit wet. Usually I say use a paper towel, but no, I wanna say use a, a cloth of some sort. From what I understand, using paper towel on your brush actually can take some of the paper towel particles onto the brush and not leach the paint properly, so it can do you a disservice. Whereas if you use a rag, just get all of it off, left, right, left, right, just keep doing that, keep doing that. There's hardly any on. I'm gonna try and show you just by brushing in one direction how much lighter his back will get. And it'll keep. But what it does is it brightens up the highest parts. So it's not so dark. One more time. Let's use this guy's back as a reference to see how much different this looks, how much lighter it looks on the highest parts. Okay, here we go. I can see it right away. It's lightening up his back big time. So if you found it, you didn't like how much you put on there, right? You can actually just go over it with the dry brush, making sure there's hardly any paint on it at all. So yeah, I'm absolutely pleased with the end result today. Super cool. I mean, you can go that extra mile and do that dry brush if you want to get those ridges even highlighted more. So it's one of those things you just kind of, you know, have to weigh out and see how far you want to go with it. But I am, again, very pleased with it. I don't even want a dry brush. I was showing earlier how you can do the back and then that's it. But it's not necessary, really, I feel. So yeah, if you like what I've done with the video today, please click that like button. And if you want to see more of my content, please subscribe to it. And for all of you that have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. I super appreciate it. Until the next one.